سلام علیکم و رحمت الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا و نبینا ابی القاسم المصطفى محمد و آله الطیبین الطاهرین لا سیما بقیت الله فی الارضین عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره إن شاء الله in the second ten nights of the months of Ramadan this year we will try to refer to some aspects of the Quranic description of heaven or Jannah this is a topic which is very important in the Quran and in all divinely revealed books. And also we have rich literature about heaven in our hadith. But our discussion will be mostly Quranic. Sometimes we refer also to hadith. So right at the beginning, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his guidance and assistance so that inshallah we would be able to understand better this important concept. But I have to also admit uh, I have also to admit that no matter how much we try, we would not be understand the greatness of heaven. Heavenly pleasure, heavenly beings are much greater than any description. Unlike worldly pleasure and things that normally when we describe them, you know, we describe them better than they are. And when we actually experience them, we realize that it was not that great. But with respect to heaven and heavenly things, it's opposite. If you make the best description, still heaven is much greater than that. And on top of that, there are things in heaven that so far have not been described. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept them as surprise. فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةَ أَعْيُونَ No one knows what has been concealed, has been hidden for them. So there are things that have not even been described. And inshallah, when you go to heaven, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would surprise you with those special gifts that have not been described. So at the beginning, I admit that in addition to my lack of time, my lack of expertise, even if all scholars work together, they would not be able to give comprehensive description of heaven. So trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we start this discussion and I have to make few points, few remarks at the beginning. One is that in Islam, and in all Abrahamic religions, belief in heaven and hell plays a great role. We don't just believe in God or in divine revelation. We also believe in hell and heaven. And in the Quran, this is very, very obvious. Iman billah and Iman bil Yawm al-Akhir, to believe in God and to believe in the hereafter 
to believe in the day of judgment, hell and heaven are very, very important. If someone believes in God, believes in the prophets, but he says, I don't believe in the hereafter, he is not considered as a faithful person. Because for us human beings, our understanding of our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our understanding of wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our understanding of what we have to do in this world, all rely on faith in the hereafter and our accountability before God and the system of reward and punishment that God has. If we take this away, we would not be able to understand why God has created us and why we are supposed to act morally and virtuously. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Afahasibtum annama khalaqnakum abathan wa annakum ilayna la turja'un. Do you think we have created you in vain and you will not return to us? So belief in resurrection secures belief in wisdom of God and if someone doesn't believe in believe in the resurrection and in our return to God it means that he thinks God has created this world without good reason so this is very fundamental issue in our faith the other initial remark that I want to make is the perfection of creation of God the Almighty can be understood and experienced and witnessed in heaven. This world, especially the part that we witness, which is the mostly the physical world, is not perfect. This material world, this physical world is ruled by the laws of physics. Therefore, there are lots of limitations, lots of interactions which may be good or bad. For example, if we have a very good location, a prime location in nature. If there are trees, there is a river, fertile land, can all people have the same prime location? No, there is limitation. Some people can have it, some people cannot have it. Most of people actually cannot have it. It's not that all human beings can have it. Why? Because something physical is limited. It's only available for few people to benefit. If we have a shortage of water, then only some people can have it. Or interaction. You derive very carefully, nicely, a careless driver comes and hits you. Can you avoid this in dunya? You cannot avoid this in dunya. You cannot say because I am a good driver, I am a good person, I would not be hit by other people. Sometimes an accident or a crime can make you suffer for all your life. A person, maybe because he's careless, hits you by his car and you become blind for all your life, or you would become unable to move, or maybe a person who is a criminal comes and injures you or kills you, so you suffer. Your piety, your carefulness in this world cannot guarantee that you would not suffer from other people's 
actions. So, this world is limited because of our interactions, because of the limitations, because of our restrictions which are forced by time, by space, by chemicals of our body. So many factors that make this world not perfect. And this is why we always say in Aqaid, we don't claim that the physical world is perfect. So don't say why there are earthquakes or floods or droughts. Because this world is not supposed and is not possible to be perfect. This is the best possible world for the purpose that we are created for. For the past, for purpose of testing and trying us for the purpose of giving us opportunities to prove ourselves, this world is perfect. But this world as such is not perfect. If you want to see the perfection of creation, inshallah, you have to go to heaven. Because then there, there is no limitations which come from physics. And also there is no need to go to trial and tests and calamities and difficulties and challenges. So for the purpose that we need now, this is the best. For the purpose of reward, that is the best. And in an absolute sense, that is the only perfect world. This is not perfect. So, inshallah, the more you know about heaven, the more you think about heaven, the more you understand the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a beautiful hadith which says mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a hundred parts. Only one part has been distributed in this world. And it is by this one in hundred of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have this world, we have sustenance, we have guidance, we have parents, spouses, children, loving people, loving teachers, I don't know, all the things that we receive from God, from people, is only because of one in hundred of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is distributed in this world. 99% will be manifested on the day of judgment, in heaven and the day of judgment. So now you can imagine, and even this 99 might not be exactly 99, it's maybe a matter of comparison. It can be just much more than 99%. So, the mercy, the love, the beauty, the piety, the knowledge, the wisdom, friendship, support, understanding, especially mutual understanding between you and others in heaven will become perfect. In dunya is even in the best conditions, is very little and limited. So, it's very important for our understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way He acts, for our understanding, our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to know heaven. But also, there is another reason why we should know more about heaven. 
And that is how we can qualify ourselves to go to heaven. Unfortunately, most of the time, people think heaven is like a resort place, a very good, I don't know, holiday location that everyone can go and enjoy. A good person can go to heaven and enjoy. Even a bad person, if by mistake or I don't know, by chance goes there, can enjoy. Like resorts in Dunya, in Dunya, anyone can go and enjoy. Because they think, please pay attention to this point. Most of people think when we go into heaven, we are surrounded by heaven. So we enter heaven and everything around us is heavenly. Not knowing that you don't go into heaven unless you become heavenly. So you will not be surrounded. It's not that heaven is around you. You have to be heaven. So heaven has to go inside you. So a mu'min who goes to heaven, he himself is heavenly. A mu'min who goes to heaven is more perfect than those trees, than those birds, than those rivers which are in heaven. So then who can go to heaven? A person whose quality is a heavenly quality so inshallah towards the end of my talk in these 10 nights i will talk more about the people of heaven ahlul jannah what are the characteristics of ahlul jannah and what are the actions of ahlul jannah what are the conversation and words of ahlul jannah inshallah we'll talk about that so discussion about heaven is very, very important. Another point is what is pleasure and what is pain? So this is also one of the initial remarks that we have to make before we start. What is pleasure and what is pain? Muslim philosophers have discussed this issue in details. And they say pleasure is a matter of understanding. And pain is also a matter of understanding. Unlike what we may think that pleasure and pain is something physical, something related to our sensation, to our body. Unlike all these type of assumptions, pleasure and pain are two types of understanding and they belong to the soul. It's a matter of idrak understanding. Who is responsible for a drug? Your soul. You may go through the same experience physically, chemically, that a person who is enjoying a delicious food has, but you may not have pleasure because your soul might be busy with something else. Imagine if you are very focused on studying or on something or if there's a problem that has preoccupied your mind maybe there is good perfume you don't understand maybe there is a delicious food you are eating but you don't enjoy although you and someone who enjoys may physically chemically be going through the same procedure but a drug is something else or two people look at the same thing 
Look at a rose flower. So what happens in their physics and in their chemistry might be the same. But one of them looks at rose flower and is full of pleasure, wants to cry. Another person may not feel that much or enjoys a little. So Muslim philosophers say pleasure is idrakul mulaim bima huwa mulaim. Understanding something which is pleasant in so far as it is pleasant and pain is idrakul munafi bima huwa munafi. You understand something which is unpleasant, something which is not suitable to your soul, you don't like it in so far as it is unpleasant. So there are two elements here and we need to remember these two elements for understanding pleasure in dunya and pleasure in heaven. Pleasure comes when there is something pleasant and you are able to understand it. If there is something which is not pleasant, you don't enjoy. If there is something pleasant, but you are not able to understand it and appreciate it, again, you don't enjoy. <coughs> we normally think that we need for pleasure to change the objects, change the location. But many times you don't need to change the objects or location, change your attitude. Try to appreciate what is there <coughs> you may have very good father good mother husband wife child community job talents skills but if you don't appreciate them if you don't understand them then you don't enjoy but the same thing with a change of attitude can become very pleasing to you. <coughs> so we need two things. We need something which is pleasant and we need to understand it as pleasant. Sometimes people by mistake may enjoy harmful things because they think they are pleasant. Or by mistake, they may suffer from good things. Because it's not important that something is in reality mulaim or monafi. What is important is that you find it to be pleasant or unpleasant. Muslim philosophers add, and they say, the greatest pleasure and they don't call this pleasure ladha, they call it bahja. Because it is intellectual and spiritual, so to avoid misunderstanding, they don't use the concept of ladha for God, they use the concept of bahja, which is intellectual and spiritual pleasure. They say the greatest pleasure actually is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who has the greatest pleasure? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he has greatest understanding of the greatest reality which is he himself so he has the greatest pleasure mu'minin among the creatures of God have greatest pleasure why because they have greatest understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the greatest pleasing beautiful kind loving object greatest pleasure is not just by eating delicious food or you know having some desires met greatest pleasure come when you have greatest understanding 
of the best of the things. So, this is also something important that we should remember. Whenever we talk about ladha or alam, about pleasure or pain, we should know that this is not something fixed, something which has nothing to do with your approach, your attitude, your understanding. No, it's very much also dependent on your understanding and your attitude as well as the properties, the characteristics of the thing which is pleasing or is bringing pain. Having said these few initial remarks, we first start with some of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared in heaven which are physical, which have something to do with our body, with our physics, and then inshallah we'll talk about some of the spiritual and intellectual blessings that Allah has prepared in heaven. So we have two types of blessings. Something physical, bodily, corporeal, and something spiritual and intellectual. With respect to the first, the Quran in many, many verses refers to several things. And I only might be able to mention one of them tonight and then inshallah we carry on tomorrow. One of the things from which actually the name of Jannah comes is that in heaven there are trees, there are gardens actually. Jannah by itself comes from the root Janana, which means Janna with Shadda. In Arabic, when something is hiding another thing, they use this root and its derivatives. For example, for Imperio, they say Janin, because Imperio is hidden in the womb of mother. You cannot see the Imperio. It's called Janin. For jinns, because we cannot see jinns normally unless they take a physical form, they are called jinn. Also, there are other cases, like for example, for the heart, also it's called janan, because you cannot see the heart of people, the spirit of people, it's called janan, heart. But jan, whose plural is janan, is used for gardens. When there are lots of trees, and these trees are so close to each other and so thick and so spread that they cover the ground. So if you look at the ground from the top of these trees, you cannot see the ground. If you look at a sky from the ground, you cannot see the sky. So these trees with their branches and leaves have provided a beautiful shadow. Inshallah, I will talk about shadow tomorrow because one of the blessings that Allah refers to the Quran, uh, to it in the Quran is shadow, dhil. We will talk about it later. So, one of the names of heaven is Jannah, which refers to the fact that there are trees beautifully located and well connected and 
in many verses in tens of verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also these trees come with flowing water rivers some mufassirin have said something very beautiful they say a tree by itself is beautiful especially if there are few trees it's very beautiful water is beautiful especially if it is flowing it's more beautiful but when you have these two combined trees and water it's much more beautiful sometimes maybe you go for a picnic you find water but there is no tree it's not that beautiful or there is tree but not water it make it perfect if both come together so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in tens of verses says Jannatun tajri min tahtihal anhar Inshallah we will talk more about these physical bodily blessings in heaven and then about spiritual and intellectual blessings in heaven and then there are other issues about heaven that inshallah we have to address we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to enter heaven and if there is any obstacle between us and heaven we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us remove inshallah